French caught my attention because of her thick, long red hair and her bright eyes. And she had something I found very special. While we were chatting, I could feel that she was allowing time and space to happen. That has started my curiosity to show up. And I have to say, for me, she is a full embodiment of sensuality, of presence, and also of, I think, playfulness, something we just so often forget about in life. So I do welcome you for today's episode, The Human Project, your podcast for inspiring stories. I am Corina Rosa Falkenberg. So let's get our conversation with Sophie French started. Sophie, yes. I gave you some cards and you received prosperity. What does it mean to you? Mm, prosperity to me means abundance and richness and delight and bliss and color. It's like a, it makes me see so much light and magic and good things coming, like an overflow of good things is what prosperity means and feels like. It's a beautiful definition. And when you've taken the card, you were smiling, you were saying, wow, this sign, it has been showing up during the last couple of days as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, it has been around in any cards I've pulled, any readings I've had. I'm like voracious at wanting to know all the things and knowing what's coming, astrology and prosperity has been, yeah, a key message for what is coming up, which is really exciting. So I learned that you're a very spiritual person. What other things, let me just three, I should know about you? Mm, good question. Three things to know about me. Mm. The first one is that I'm <laughs> currently going through my Saturn return, which in astrology terms is like this time of, mm, the first word that comes to mind is turmoil. And it is kind of like that. Wow. It's like when your life is, you've built your life to a certain mm -hmm. point and then the universe shows up and comes in and breaks down anything that wasn't working for you, anything mm -hmm. that wasn't feeling good, anything that wasn't aligned with your path or your direction. It's almost like you've built this house of cards and anything that isn't stable or isn't meant for you is knocked down. And we have like this three year um, period. So I'm in that right now, in this phase of my life of letting go of things that were not working and rebuilding and building and the foundations of what's to come and what's next so that's one thing another thing to know about me is i have been living in bali for a year and it has been the best example of what happens when we follow our knowing, even when it doesn't make sense. So coming for a two week holiday and then ending up being here for an entire year. And it has been like the best year of my life in so wow. many ways. Um, so yeah, that I live in Bali now and that's like real life. I left my whole life behind and This is now where I call home for now. And the third thing would be... Mm, I'm very excited about life. I love meeting new people. I love being on this adventure. I feel like it's a treasure chest 
and we just get to keep finding these amazing jewels in people, mm -hmm. in humans, in our experiences, even when they're, even when on the surface they don't feel like they're good or they feel bad or they're disruptive or upsetting. I think everything that happens to us really shows us whatever we need at the time and I like to see it as being on this exploration into jewels and gems and the things that we get to find and the jewels and gems in us as well um, yeah so beautiful thank you mm -hmm. and it was also so beautiful not just to listen to you but to observe you while you were speaking you made little breaks and you took the time to close your eyes and to go in to have a look inside what's coming up and you looked so relaxed and you had this lovely smile right now here it is again that is so full of joy and it's juicy at the same time you know mm -hmm. it's full of good vibes mm -hmm. i remember when i saw you the first time i asked for you to be photographed by me um, you have beautiful red hair red orange hair which is so how to say kind of fire element to me mm -hmm. and then this eyes those eyes they are blue greenish gray mm -hmm. yeah very very special and i said you, to you before that your energy is playful at the same time it's like oh i'm looking what's coming around the corner mm -hmm. it's full of adventure adventure spirit mm -hmm. what would you say to what extent adventures in life are important for you versus a life i know exactly what i do tomorrow mm -hmm. you said your dad he's working in the financial field mm -hmm. so most probably he's having a different time schedule than you do mm -hmm. um so tell me how important is this kind of adventure feeling not knowing what comes next the uncertainty in life mm, yes i I feel like I really thrive on, well, I want to say on the uncertainty of life, but as I say that, I remember hearing something from Tony Robbins of like, people think oh, that they it. like uncertainty and it's like, yeah, only if it's good stuff. Like you <laughs> like surprises as long as it's a good one. So as I say it, I'm like, oh yeah, that's interesting. Is that actually true? Um, but what I am doing more of is learning to embrace uncertainty and be excited about what is unfolding um, and being in more of this flow state. I definitely feel like for the past year has been this experiment, you know, being in Bali, which feels like a very flow kind of energy. I have been on this experiment of like, how much can I lean into the unfolding of just being open to what's here, to what's meant to be, how can I follow that flow in comparison to a life of feeling the need to know what's coming and know what the structure is and to have the house and the partner and the plan and be doing the same thing as everyone else is doing, this like checklist. I feel like I've done now this absolute contrast where life now feels way more exciting because we don't know what's coming any time. And I think that's what gives it so much richness of, you know, even in this connection with you, we've had this connection and then you're like going to Germany and it's like, wow, we were both so open in this, like open hearted of like, you seem cool. I like your vibe. I want to connect. And when we can live like this and be open to this, like you never know what connections you can make, what opportunities can come your way and where these like adventures and connections can take you. And that just means every single year that we get to be here is exciting and is worth being here for. It makes it fun and it's certainly never dull. That is for sure. You were coming from the northern part of London, one and a half hours away from London. You were 30. You arrived here in Bali with your boyfriend. You split it up shortly after your arrival. How is it for you? You have been dating 
for quite a long time, I think something like seven, eight years. How is it for you to exactly not complete that list that a woman at the age of 30, coming from the UK, close to London, maybe has in mind, like getting settled, having kids, having a lovely husband, having some financial stability, yeah? all those criteria that society is maybe measuring still women against. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Mm. It's certainly been something to really come to terms with in, in terms of this, yeah, societal expectation. And it's, it came to that realization of like, well, I had all of the things, mm -hmm. I ticked off the boxes, I was there, and yet deep within me, there was a deep a sadness, a questioning, a something that was saying, this is not it. Mm -hmm. It looks like it, or it looks like it could be close, but something doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. And there was this moment where I decided to, you know, break things off and change my life, where I had to think, like, what am I going to be happiest about that I stayed in the checklist and I completed this like made up reality or when I'm like on my deathbed am I going to be thinking oh I'm really glad that I ticked off those things that society said I should do that's success or is a successful life following your heart following your feelings following what feels right or doesn't I just feel like as long as I've done that, even if my mind can't make sense of it, even if society doesn't agree with it or expect it, I will know when I'm with myself on my own on the last mm. day here, I followed that and that feels like a metric of success for me and that's how I'd really like to continue living wherever mm. that might lead Maybe to a nice husband, but maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. And that's okay. Not <laughs> exactly, yeah. Society can be a burden sometimes because society is so strong. There are so many unspoken expectations in there. Would you view yourself and your lifestyle and how you are, like from an external view, having a look on you, you look very special. So how is it for you? Do you feel like being part of society or do you view yourself as observing society, its pattern, its rules, its manipulative tricks? Hmm? Do you view it rather from an external angle or do you yourself being in the middle of that flow? Mm, I definitely see myself as an observer. I have always had this feeling that I've been like on the outside looking in, always questioning how humans interact, questioning what's going on, being quite sensitive to what's going on around in society. So I would definitely say I'm an observer. And again, being here in, in Bali, it feels like I'm in a bubble looking at the rest of the world, essentially, in a, from a different um, perspective or in a different way of being and almost looking at my old life too I'm an observer of that of like oh I see how that happened I see how you felt as though you should be living in a certain way and that's okay but I can also see how you are different now and how you want to live in a way that questions society mm. and that doesn't just follow the rules and actually follows my own rules like more my own intuitive sense of what feels good for me for my life for my decisions does that feel right and moving with that instead I would assume it requires a lot of self-confidence not to go just easily with the flow that society is offering you because it is also quite comfortable to just go with the flow so you told me in your early 20s, you made a crucial experience. You have worked in business, so you were part of this business system, the business wheel. You worked mm -hmm. a lot, and then something happened. You couldn't get out of bed for something like three months. You had to stay in to get all your part of the old energy at least mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. 
And then you became someone who's helping other people to overcome their fears, maybe to expand, yeah, to mm -hmm. view things differently. You became a coach. And you said you became a coach for business people, largely for business owners, for entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So this, um, what happened in your early 20s, how would you describe it? And what kind of lesson could you take away so that you were able to have now a life that is maybe closer to what you originally wanted to be? Mm, yeah, so early on in my 20s, I was working for a PR company and I was very, I like worked my way up really quickly. It was really fun, but very, very stressful. And I had so much responsibility, worked all the time and was exhausted. So then I moved to Australia and saw that there was this very relaxed way of living and being. And I was like, wow, that initially changed my whole mindset. So I was like, huh, the world and work doesn't have to be how we want it to be or how we have experienced it. It doesn't have to be so like um, hard and heavy and busy. And I was like, okay, that's great to know. How do I experience that for myself? Mm -hmm. So I thought the answer was, of course, to work for myself, to start my own business and to do my own thing. Like, surely that's ultimate freedom. And so I did start working for myself and it was amazing to be making my own money and working with these businesses. And yet, I'd built like this nine to five of my own and it was more of a 7 a.m. till 11 p.m. every single day, being totally exhausted at the beck and call of my clients, feeling like I needed to be there for everyone all the time. Now I just wasn't a cog in the wheel of a company. I was running a company and being the accountant and the marketeer and I was running on these programs that says this has to be hard if you make this a success and so eventually my partner at the time had to peel me away from my laptop to take me away where I was just like a shell of myself and then by the Christmas of that year I switched off my laptop and I couldn't switch it on again for a nut for three months I was absolutely exhausted I was sick my grandma also passed away during that time too so I was in grief And I was still desperate to get back to work. Like I still wasn't even processing grief because I just felt like I had to work and I was letting people down. And what does this mean about me? I must be lazy. And it was then that I realized like, if that is what running a business means, then I don't want to play anymore. I don't want to be in this. There has to be a different way of working there has to be a different way of living that is not conducive to how I've been doing it so what does that look like and then I essentially went on this quest to find it and yeah I found a lot of it in rest allowing ourselves to rest and that is a lot of the message that I share now allowing ourselves to rest That seems so contradictory to what you see in the Western world. People running around in shopping malls, back home, doing A, B, C, D, having to-do lists, having podcasts teaching them what to do, to just let it go, to do more yoga, to do meditation, everything. How should one get more rest? Mm. I definitely would say to be putting it back as a priority mm -hmm. in the first place which sounds so simple but as humans we've gone so far into technology into being connected all the time into feeling the weight of the world and responsibility we've actually forgotten that rest is like a crucial part of our lives and our well-being People have even forgotten that like sleep is really important. You know, people are answering emails at 3 a.m. when they go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. Like that's not rest. That's not switching off our brains. 
we really want to be like our nervous systems are now activated more than ever before Mm -hmm. longer than ever before more than ever before and it's so crucial that we are actually switching that allowing the parasympathetic nervous system to switch on so that we feel deep rest in our body because essentially that means we can work better that we can be more productive and that most importantly we can live more fulfilling lives and like be in this experience so to rest more is to really I think first understand the importance of it and that it's there for a reason and it's really key that we actually utilize that how does a perfect rest for you look like is it like watching netflix is it lying in bed and counting time to pass how does it look like for you that special moment of a rest Mm, i love this question because it's been such a journey for me still to be able to actually rest because sometimes you can think that you're resting but you're not (laughs) you know you can be like oh yeah i'm really resting i'm reading this book while i'm half looking at my phone and then I'm watching Netflix but while watching this other thing or thinking about this and think that you're resting but it's not so my version of rest now is switching off my phone just not having access to it having really strict boundaries over when I'm using it or not using it it is taking myself somewhere where that's like retreating in my bedroom or taking myself off somewhere to be and doing really deeply restorative things so that might be some yoga that actually relaxes my body last week I had my first experience of a float tank which was the most restful experience how cool is that it was so cool yes it was amazing I have not felt that like deeply rested and restored for a really long time so it was a new sensation a kind of little adventure Mm -hmm. yes it was very new it was like that next level of rest because it's a sensory deprivation is the point of it and it really helps you to see how much we are stimulated all the time in all of our senses so to be able to go to this like dark quiet space within was such a treat and that was like real deep rest and also a lot of subconscious meditation I do so like hypnotherapy things that actually take me down into a restful state that tap into my subconscious and help me to deeply go into rest because we're so wired to not it can just take a little bit of priming and a little bit of conditioning until we Ah, finally, let ourselves really drop. Mm-hmm. How many hours a day do you sleep, Sophie? Mm, I sleep, so I fall asleep maybe 10.30 and wake up about 7.30. So what is that? Oh, Eight or nine, nine hours. hours. It's a nine hour sleep. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Since when have you been practicing that? Mm. I I feel like sleep has always been super important, like a really good sleep. So I want to say forever. Like <laughs> people have always said like, oh, Soph loves a nap or she loves to sleep. And it used to be like a funny joke. And now it's something I'm so proud of, you know, of like, no, I, yes, I do need to sleep because I am a human and that is what we need to do. Um... This is so important, the message. Sleep is underestimated. Mm -hmm. It is so important. If I have a nice, lovely sleep, the whole day is different. Mm -hmm. The whole day is different. So what is your idea when one of your clients comes and says, at night I'm waking up, I have all my business figures in my head, I have business problems I cannot solve, how can I please find a peaceful sleep at night? Mm -hmm. What kind of uh, consultants or advice Do you hand them over? Mm, Yeah, so I work with clients with a process called EFT, which Mm -hmm. is a made of emotional freedom technique tapping. Um, So this is something I will teach them and help them work through. Like that for me, whenever my mind is buzzing or all over the place, 
tapping through it and essentially just releasing whatever we've got in our brain and and it's a sensation of telling our bodies or our minds it's okay to fall asleep now it is okay to be asleep um also recommending switching off digital things and then actively brain dumping before bed anything that is on your mind anything that might be playing on it before you go to sleep getting it out so that it's not flying around before you finish your day and also any meditations any things that can actively tell you there is nothing else you need to do right now just allow yourself to fall asleep like just these small shifts and movements to like just allow our bodies to know that it is safe mm-hmm. for us to go to sleep because they're so wired in an evolutionary way you know if we think we're in danger or they're switched on they need a little bit of comfort a little bit of it's okay you're allowed to go to sleep now so it's like speaking to ourselves asking ourselves what is it that we need what would I say to a little child that couldn't sleep Mm, and had all the ideas and the excitement like you'd say hey it's time to sleep now calm like let's get calm what do you need let's read you a story you know this is what again we all are as humans Mm -hmm. and the things that we need so I think just being more mindful to ourselves Mm -hmm. of how to relax you said social media connection to the internet to this virtual world where you are also part of because you have thousands of followers on Instagram and you're of course using this as a tool also to bring your business forward so it has some advantages. I like it as a user as well. It provides information, new perspectives. But I find sometimes it's really difficult to draw the line when it becomes toxic. So you as an active user also of the social media, how, where what are the criteria where you say now it's It's a bit too much. I have to go out again. What do you do then? Mm, yes. So social media is like one of those tools that I'm so grateful and thankful mm. for. And I think the key thing is knowing mm-hmm. when I'm getting into any addictive behaviors or mm-hmm. addictive patterns and seeing it as what it is in terms of this like dopamine hitter that it hits us like a drug with this thing so if I'm waking up in the morning and instantly reaching for my phone I'm like looking at that of like well how would I feel if I was immediately reaching for a cigarette right now or immediately reaching for a beer right now I wouldn't I would ask questions to myself about that so there's no difference in that so I start seeing any like addictive patterns and where it may Mm -hmm. not be Mm -hmm. and start almost weaning myself off of that Mm -hmm. before it comes in so I'm very aware of my user time and again it's been a practice but it might be like setting a timer and seeing social media as like a place I'm going into so I'll be like right for 10 minutes I'm going in And I'll do as much scrolling as I want. I'll do as much messaging as I want. Get back to whoever I need to. And then I'll actively f- pull myself out. It's just this like energetic place that we can go to. And I think being mindful of how we're using it. Same way, again, we would be with food. It's mm-hmm. one of these like external things that we look for. Sometimes for distraction. And sometimes to help us not feel our feelings. Sometimes because we're Mm -hmm. searching for something outside of ourselves. Social media is simply another example of how humans use these tools to think that they need something outside of them. But actually, when we can just be mindful of that and see how we would be treating any other thing, like food or TV or anything else, it just helps us get a little bit of distance from it. And to be able to come back to ourselves and look inwards for what is it that we're actually searching for or seeking in that. I love it. Thank you. You said before you are kind of observer of society, of human behavior, you're coaching humans. 
So you know a lot about humans. How do you view humans, the humanity? Do you have a positive attitude? Also in regard of environmental aspects, how we treat certain animals, how we treat each other. So what is your inner personal view on humanity? Is it full of love and understanding and forgiveness? And if not, when there are certain moments of bitterness or I just don't understand my neighbor, whatever it is, what do you do then to not lose maybe hope? Mm. I would love to say that I really <laughs> see humanity as this like love filled, love filled, amazing place. And for the most part, I try my best to do that. But yes, there are so many things about humanity that have really fallen off track and really cannot be how we were supposed to be or mm -hmm. live. And in that, what I see is just so much fear that everyone, that there are two sides to humanity. There is the love side and the love filled part that people are mostly craving and connecting that I really think everyone deeply, truly is craving. And there's this other side that is driven by so much fear and uncertainty and worry and disconnection from self and from each other. And I think that is when, when we're so disconnected is where we take these actions that are not healthy or are not good. But I think in this, the thing that helps me to see people, understand people, to not take everything so personally, is to imagine everyone as children, as like these babies that came out into the world not having a clue why we're here and relying on the world to support us, to take care of us, to help keep us alive. And that's where we all came from, like regardless of where everyone is, We have all been a baby. We all came from the same place. And we are all just children in adult bodies trying to figure out what on earth we're doing. And when I'm able to see us all as that person, that child, just trying to do what they think is best, trying to protect themselves, trying to figure out how they think they should do things, And simply going with whatever they've been told to be true and conditioned, it really helps to just have a little bit more compassion to why the state of the world might be in the way it is in. And for individual people, why they may behave that way. It really helps to just drop into that more understanding and not being so caught up in the story of humans being terrible I don't think we were made that way nor are such powerful statement thank you very much for sharing thank you you're ready for three questions oh yes <laughs> mm, think of the worst thing that happened to you what did you learn from it mm. Oh, wow. I think the worst thing that's happened so far was my grandpa passing away really suddenly. And a week before that, I'd crashed his car and hadn't had a chance to tell him. And the following week, I just woke up in the morning and had this knowing that something bad was going to happen. And I had no idea what it was, but it led me to go and see him that day to um, explain what had happened, to make sure we were at peace, to make sure everything was okay. And then that was the night that he passed away. And in that 
knowing of how deeply my intuition or something outside of me told me, took me, guided me to that, that changed my perspective on the world and life forever. It helped me to really believe and have witnessed a greater force that is within us should we have the courage to follow it or see it or allow that to take us wherever it needs to. Now comes an easy one. What's an activity that you don't currently practice or do that you would love to learn? And what's holding you back? Mm, great question. An activity would be, the first thing that comes to mind is singing. So the only singing that I do now is singing in the shower. <laughs> And as much as my housemates are so kind and tell me that they loved hearing it, I'd love to be doing more of that in the world and singing and sharing. You want to start right now? <laughs> no. <laughs> Because the thing holding me back is deep fear of all the stories of like, what if I'm actually not? any good what if this is horrible these are the thoughts that go on in my mind um yeah the thought of it makes me feel sick but this year it's going to happen feel free you're more than a right now <laughs> isn't it funny that i hear that very often of the singing this to open up here mm. that we are so locked in mm -hmm. I mean it's our voice and I heard once everybody can sing mm -hmm. we just lost that practice mm, that's so I'm true. looking forward for that day when you're finally yes. singing up loud thank you the last one how would you explain the word love to someone without using the word love Ooh, wow. Hmm. I would say it feels like magic in your whole body. It's like blissful, tingling sensation and it You see clearly, you see people clearly, you see yourself clearly, and you remember who you are and what you're here for and what's important. Yeah, that is how I would describe it. Beautiful. Big, big, big thank you from my side. It was a pleasure to have shared the time with you for this wonderful conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Mm. Thank you. Beautiful. For me a very special conversation and I feel now very joyful I have to say I do hope that you feel the same or you feel of course how you feel but I do wish that you feel at least inspired if you enjoy listening to my podcast I would kindly invite you to subscribe to the channel and to leave a review on Apple podcast Check also out our Instagram, the Human Project Underline Podcast. And make sure, if you want to find out more about Sophie, to check out our show notes. There you can find more information about her. Thank you very much for your time and for your attention. And I'm already looking forward to spend more time with you. Until then, 
keep on shining. Yours, Corina Rosa. Mm -hmm.